from San Francisco, California. This is the Rock and Roll Geek Show. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name is Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. As you can tell by that noise, I'm still at the Rock and Pod Expo. The day's not even almost, maybe it's a two-thirds of the way over. I'm here with um, Mark Striegel from Talking Metal. He's on the Rock and Roll Geek Show. Hey, Mark. Hey, Michael. Doing? Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on. I've never met you before except for yesterday. I know John. You met John, I think, like a decade ago or so in New York. You were doing something there. And, yeah. And he came over, I yeah. thought, and, and think interviewed you for Talking Metal at that time. I don't know if, no, I think, I don't know. But I met him. He's a nice guy. He, right. Is he still managing Ace Freely? Yes, yes. You know, his involvement in Talking Metal isn't quite what it used uh, to be. He's joined me here, which is very cool, but um, it, it's... He's kind of, kind of just like a reoccurring character on the show at, at this point. Character, but, <laughs> but he is—he's uh, definitely managing Ace, and he holds down a, a full-time job at Nickelodeon. On top of that, so yeah. Oh, he works yeah. at Nickelodeon. What's he do there? <clears throat> he archives photos. So if you need a photo of. A Nickelodeon talent. You ask John Astronomy. Is it John Astronomy or John Ostrowski? Ostrowski is, is that what? Yeah. So they say John Ostrowski. I need Ren and Stimpy. Yeah, I need. Or, yeah, I, th- I think they're not on Nickelodeon anymore. But okay, you know, right, I need right. SpongeBob SquarePants uh-huh. or oh, one nice. of the teen stars from you know uh, from from oh, the so teens. They, they huh. you know, he'll send out the official SpongeBob. Oh, you know, hire press a guy full time to do that. Yeah. Wow, that's <laughs> great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, photo archiver is I think his uh, his title. You were working for Talking Metal, weren't you? Or not uh, Talking Metal? Excuse me. You were work, you were working for that metal show. Uh, I I was the producer at the for the the final couple seasons of How that metal that? show. Yeah, it was it was good. It was what, very what's, good. What's entail? What does the producer job entail? At talking, well, uh, at I, the talk. I don't know why I keep calling his show the Talking Metal. But what's that? that? I don't know why I keep calling that metal show talking metal, but right. what well, is the producer, producer for that metal show do? Well, what I what I would do is I did all the backstage online footage that they... Oh, put, bonus footage. Bo- bonus footage. You walked so, around with the camera? Uh, no, I had a camera guy and I had an audio guy and I, I basically walked around. We had this, this, this chick, Jennifer, who was, you know, she was the... Uh, the Vanna White of the show, and she would, you know. Oh, that's the girl who uh, yeah. did the sign. Yeah, so yeah. so, so she had her own uh, exclusive footage on VH1.com. Oh, really? So huh. I do that, and then it also like it was very cool. Like I got to sit down and basically do backstage interviews. interviews. Oh. Yeah, with like I first day I, I worked there, I, I interviewed Getty Lee and and Joe Elliott back to back. You know, backstage. Of course, I wasn't on camera. Right. But you know, I, I so it was a great experience, and it was a lot. It was a lot of fun. Um, I, I really, I had probably more fun working on that show than when we were actually doing the Talking Metal TV show. You know, it was, it was, oh, that's right. You guys had a show on Fuse, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, which you know. But inspired that metal show. That's what the the people at VH1 told me. You know, so uh-huh, yeah, right. so it was a little bittersweet actually to work on that metal show. But it still, it was a great. It was a great run when I was. Did that metal it. show pay well. Uh, it paid pretty well. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I I took a slight pay cut. But you were working for VH1 already. No, I was not. I was working. I was. Uh, I worked for Sci-Fi. I worked for VH1 back in the '90s. I was a a, a staff guy there. I I, I worked for Sci-Fi. For like eight years as a staff guy, and then I've been freelance since about 2011. So I bounce around from station to station. So now, what are you doing for a living now? Uh, same Talking thing. Talking metal? No, no, yeah, <laughs> no. Uh, I'm doing freelance production work. I do a lot of promos. I'm working on a show called Suits for USA Network okay. right now. Okay. Um, worked on some sci-fi promos earlier this year. We do a lot of work at IFC. At We TV on Marriage Boot Camp Reality Stars. Oh, you're staying in show business. Too. Yeah, so so TV production work is is where I make my money. Uh-huh. Talking Metal's still like a in hobby. New York. In New York, yeah, yeah. So Talking Metal's still a hobby that occasionally will will pay for itself. If it's a good month, maybe I'll make a hundred, two hundred bucks. How yeah. often do you do Talking Metal? 
We do talking metal. I do talking metal. I should say at this point. Then your and, wife co-hosted with you. Yeah, she's she's involved. Does she, she come on the show? or She just does the video stuff. No, she comes on the show. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. We got a, we got an interview with Vernon Reed that she did. She went into the city and did an interview with him on an upcoming episode. So she's on she's on a lot. Um, it, it's you know more my thing now. You know with her and John and other co-host joining in uh so you do one episode a week yeah we do at least one a week yeah. at least one a week yeah you, at least one how many have you done at this rock and pot expo uh too many man we did we did like i think today i did at least like 10 episodes oh really yeah yeah who did you interview uh we did the guitar player at kid rock we did some comedian we did some did, comedian yeah we did the people who bought you know the what do you call them the the episodes the co-hosting oh, right, episodes okay, uh-huh. the, the yeah. rewards or whatever how they long were. did one of those last did about 30 minutes oh okay yeah yeah you did some of those too right i've yeah. been doing you're that's doing one right doing now with me doing yeah. with you. thank you for <laughs> yeah. donating yeah you bet you bet I, did you think that was a dick move that you had to donate um you to offered. you you to offered. you no yeah. no and, and i mean i i was actually I prefer the money go to you, actually, which I think it, it yes, did. Yes, that I, money I went to me because yeah, all yeah. the co-host things were already taken. So I, yeah, she's in yeah. right. To, I appreciate it. No, I've, I've been wanting to do it for a while. I mean, and and you know, I, not to kiss your ass, but you're the reason we started doing it. You know, and and you know, which brings me to I, something I wanted to ask you about. I mean, you know, podcasting. It seems you started, I think, in 2004. We started in 2005. It's just really in this past five years. It's, really exploded you know and, with and all comedians or wannabe comedians right yeah. oh really yeah well I mean look at the guys who are just on stage I mean, yeah those yeah. guys were great those guys are hilarious <laughs> <laughs> how, I mean how how do you feel podcasting has evolved are we in a, a worse place now than we were like like seven eight years I, ago who knows I don't who knows I don't right. I don't know and I don't care <laughs> right 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 I just do the doing the stupid show yeah. So I don't even. Did you read the? You read the program? No, I didn't. Read it the said you shouldn't listen. <laughs> oh, is that what you said? Yeah. 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 How's the? How's? Now I'm going to call your show that metal show. How's that yeah. metal show doing? That, that metal <laughs> show is gone. It's it's off the air. No, yeah. I know. How's how's yeah. talking metal doing? No, talking metal. Is this good. guy going to bang the drums now? Please, dude, don't. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> They got the the Peter Chris's actual drum kit here. Is that Peter Chris? Oh no, Peter Chris is over yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, what was your question about talking about? I forgot. Yeah, I forgot. how's it, it doing? Matter. It's it's doing good. You know, it's like it it, it went down because why? What do you mean down? Well, I, and it, you know, I had I had two kids, and you mean and, you stopped doing it for a while? Well, we didn't stop doing. I didn't stop doing it, but I wasn't doing it as frequently. Mm. It wasn't. It was like a, a twice a month thing, right. and and we definitely not that bad. You know, it, yeah, we definitely lost a lot of listeners. I think in two thousand ten, two thousand eleven, but stop, we built it back. You think if you only do two shows a month, you lose listeners? I, I feel we lost listeners. Yeah. How do you know? What do you watch? Do you look at the numbers? I look something? at the numbers. Yeah. yeah. I never. I've never looked at the numbers. In, no. Ever. Right. Really. Wow. Well, I'm afraid well, to look. Yeah. I would just like to kid myself and say that I got a zillion listeners. So well, I'd the numbers are misleading because, you know, you look, oh, we got 4,000 downloads. I never, but that doesn't mean 4,000 people listen. Yeah. You know what I mean? I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. I've never, ever looked. So really? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Surprise. I would judge it more by how many people email the show and right. you know, donations are. So right. You guys survive on donations and Patreon and... I just started a patreon thing uh, yeah i was at you you have one yeah i was looking at yeah i haven't charged thing. anybody for the entire month of august because i've been doing the dog days thing which oh, is right. a, mo- a show every day for mo- for the month of august i haven't charged anybody for any right. of those right so i don't care it's not about money to me right <clears throat> well is there a way it could be about money though? i don't give a shit you don't give it doesn't a shit. matter to me yeah. man yeah it's just, uh, you know, it's after 12 years of doing it, I still occasionally think, well, if we did this or we did that, is there a way we can start to make a, at least a profit off of it? Which Why? Is the wife trying to, is she on your case to make no, a profit? No, she is, you know, no, not at all. She's your wife? Your wife seems like a really cool girl. Yeah, yeah that's my wife. How long have you been married to her? Uh, we've been married 11 years. Yeah. yeah. How old are your kids? Our, seven and eight. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. seven and eight. Yeah. I've been married. I'm going on uh, 27 years mm. of marriage. 
Wow, congratulations. Jared and Randy. Yeah. 27 long. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm kidding. Right. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. So you want to play some songs? Yeah, let's do some this songs. This is your All show, right. by the way. Okay, for, cool. So this is actually Hello, this is actually Rock Talking Pod Metal Expo. on the Rock and Roll Geek Show feed. Okay, well, uh, the, some of the songs I picked aren't necessarily this is metal, the but, uh, podcast, you know. Building, anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we got, uh, we'll start thinking. I heard you talking about Motorhead recently on, on the dog days of, of summer podcasting. Yeah, because you did Heroes. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you were, was that when you were touring with Exodus that you were, you were out uh, we, on the road with Motorhead? We played with that, yeah, when I was in Exodus. We played yeah. South America. We did some shows in uh, Argentina. Oh, okay. With Motorhead. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, that kind of inspired me to play uh, Dancing on Your Grave oh, by that's Motorhead. The, that's the best Motorhead album. You know, I think so, too. A lot of, a lot of people disagree with us, though. Another Perfect Day is my favorite Motorhead album. Really? Really, yeah, with Brian Robertson. Yeah. That's why I love it. It's the most melodic Motorhead album. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a great record. So, yeah, let's hit that, Dancing on Your Grave by Motorhead. You're the DJ, so you got to Okay, oh, i got to pull up my iTunes. Yeah, okay, here we go. All right, here we go. Another perfect day. Or, I'm sorry, Dancing on Your Grave off of Another Perfect Day on Rock and Roll Geek Show. <laughs>
All right. So you guys were on. You guys went on stage. You did your show from the stage too. Yes. You, yeah. You did Mark Slaughter. Slaughter. Yeah. That was good. That was, was it probably, all right? Yeah. That was probably the best one. The heavy metal parking lot guys were good. Yeah. Uh, the songwriter yeah, thing with with the Nelson guys, guys were good, songwriter. and your guys were good. I said oh, well, thanks. Track review, but we only I felt so much I would feel kind of weird so getting up we on stage. And, so right. kudos track, to you for uh, having the balls to get up on stage and do a dancing yeah, was, bear routine uh, for everybody. Yeah, I mean it's always a little nerve wracking being in front of an audience doing it, and I'm I got to the point where I don't like doing interviews with other people chiming in. I kind of like to control the interview. So you know, Emily and John were. were we're, we're great, but it's just like I'm always like kind of nervous about where things are going to go. I'm like a control freak when it comes to the interviews. So yeah, you don't listen to any of these shows that are here. You do. I listen. To, I listen to your show. I listen to um, Joey's show. Joey Haney, Rock Strikes Ten. Yeah, uh, Joey Rock and Roll. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and occasionally I'll, I'll tune, tune into Decibel Geek. I mean, I'm just being honest, you know. I, and it's like you know, when you do your own show, there's only so many hours in the day that you're able to listen to other shows. Yeah, I don't want to listen to other music podcasts because I'm afraid I'm going to rip somebody off by accident. So I'd rather just not listen. Yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. Definitely. But, do, but you listen to non-music podcasts? Yeah, I listen to non-music podcasts. Which, which ones do you listen to? Uh, I listen to some fishing podcasts. Oh, nice! <laughs> and uh, Phil Hendry, I like that. You know who Phil Hendry is? No. He's this guy who does these um, voices. He used to have a radio show, and he would have these weird topics, and he would have these guests on that said like extremely offensive things, but the guests were him doing the voices of these guests right. and he would offend callers and callers would call in and um, argue with the guests who were at okay. reality him so it was like a big put on he does a podcast it's hilarious alright cool check it out uh, yeah, that's cool. the kind of shit I listen to cool does John just oh John is here by the way John Michael had requested that John Astronomy I'm gonna put you on the spot here John you want the headphones for a minute it's okay I can hear alright so, so I was a friend of the show of named family. Eric. So I was like, All right, I'm coming over in the middle. So okay. <laughs> very loud here. Eric Mortensen wanted me to ask you this. Very, very okay. So you were on the road with Ace Freely, and Ace was doing a bunch of uh, VIP meet and greets, right? My friend, who does a podcast, paid for the meet and greet. I'm putting you on the spot. Punch me in the nose if this bothers you, okay? So my friend um, was... So the meet and greet consisted of you go on the bus, you wait until Ace summons you on the bus, and then you get to have Ace sign your stuff. Orchestrating that, Orchestrating this. So my friend pulls out his phone and says, Hi, I do a podcast, and I was wondering if you would do an ID for my podcast. And immediately he was thrown off the bus. I don't think... Okay, here, let me sit there for a second. And my Sorry, Mark. Don't, don't worry. You, no. you got Mark, all the time you want, Mark. Mark, Mark you can sit tuned for my music picks. <laughs> okay. Mark. Oh, cool. Chad, I'll give you a call. Is this putting you on the spot? No, so here's the thing. I put those... Now, w w this was in the U.S., right? Yes. I don't know what... There was, there was a... Almost every single U.S. show I've been at, but... There's Because I'm the tour manager, but there's a couple of shows that I wasn't at but no, I'm you not, were there. I, you were there. Oh, I was definitely there. there. Okay, so so if it was a show that I was there, I I was probably the guy orchestrating the the meet and greet. Now there are a couple of cases where, you know, there are various people who sometimes are local security guys, or sometimes people we bring with us, or sometimes there's new guys, there's there's veteran guys, and and not everything that happens hap like it is. I guess my is question, fault, but. But let me let me let me go. The thing though is that usually what happens with somebody who wants to get something recorded, if they if somebody just pulls out a camera on the spot, sometimes it gets. I don't uh, think it was a camera. I think it was fun. Does Ace not like to do IDs and stuff? What it is is that 
It is like anytime somebody wants to do something like that with Ace, he wants me to know in advance and then kind of set it up. So, so I, then, I, I, like, so if I know, like, let's say you're coming, I, I will say, Ace, we're going to do a meet and greet. I got my friend Michael you know, Butler is coming. He does the Rock and Roll Geek Show. It's a really important podcast. And when he comes, we're going to do an ID. Like, Ace just doesn't want to be surprised by someone. Uh-huh. Now, if your friend would have told me in advance, I could have set it up better. Um, now, I don't think I ever threw anybody off a bus unless... They, uh, I don't think you threw them off. I think some security guys threw him off. Guy, see, occasionally, if a security guy threw him Mark's off... Pit, by the way, Mark's pissed that, off. Mark is pissed uh, off. He's easy. <laughs> <laughs> now the truth of it is is that if a occasionally we're, we're like a guy that's quote our security guy could could really be like usually we have one real security guy and we've got like a couple of people maybe helping out now it's it, I would never want somebody to throw somebody who paid for a meet and greet off the bus I, I if I would ever um, you know, unless I would never want to throw anybody off a bus unless I thought that they were going to cause some kind of trouble or something like that. And I'm sure your friend wasn't going to do that, especially a, when I hear that there's a podcaster. I always am extra nice to people who say that they're podcasters uh, just because I so know. How, so he should have asked you in advance. Yeah. If, if he would have, uh, if maybe he would have emailed me and said, look, John, I'm a podcaster. Um, is there any way I can get a, an ID? I, I would try to make it happen because of the fact that um, that we, Mark and I asked so many people for this kind of stuff when we were just trying to do this, and we still are asking people for stuff. So I, I would have made it happen. I'm really sorry if your your buddy had like a, a negative I just, experience. I just now, had to ask you. Now, what I would do is if you hook your buddy back up with me again, uh, and he, he, you know, uh, if we're in his town, uh, make sure that he, he comes up to me, and I'll, I'll hook him up with an ID. Now, here's the other thing, though. If it was in... We had a real rough time in a show in California once where I, I literally was nearly beat up by the uh, you know venue owner's kid or something like that. So occasionally, why why would you get why did you get beat up? There was a problem with the, yeah, the 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 venue claimed that they didn't have they didn't have the money to pay us. Oh, and, uh, so they're going to beat you up instead. Literally, the, we uh, could pay you or we could beat you up. We'll yeah, just beat you I up. I was afraid. I had to go get. Uh, oh, so it's your job to collect. With, yeah. Oh, good. Uh, yeah. I had to go get a. I might even have been a talking metal fan who was a big dude to like come and bodyguard me at this one gig when I was trying to collect them, the settlement at the end of the night. So you never know, maybe, I don't know if that was the gig that this happened, because occasionally maybe things were going so haywire that anything extra was like frazzling me or something. That, that could be the case. But in general, the, the main thing with Ace is that... So I get in trouble if somebody. Later, I don't get in trouble, but I'm not doing my job if, if some some weird thing happens and something gets sprung on Ace that he's uh-huh. not. Expecting. Ace will get pissed and fight. You think he might fire you or something? You know, he, he just. If, I would even be mad at myself. Like if if I let something strange happen. I'm not doing my job. I'm supposed to know exactly what's yeah. going to happen when the people come up. And if the people don't, we're supposed to give okay. them instructions. If, right. if they don't do, like, the routine, it's it's the people who set up the meet and greet's fault. And that's, that's just that's a, my rule, even. Okay. So right. the thing, though, is if, 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 you, if, you're fr- if I'll, you hook it up through me, to, when next time Mace is in the area that your friend is at, and um, and we'll set it up in advance. Now, if we set, now we can't everything that somebody wants, we can't do in advance, like interviews and stuff. Usually, we we try to do we don't, we don't do interviews like day of show really much anymore because it's we're always I got like, it. I got it. But if I, I I just want your friend to know and any listener to know that Eric Mortensen. Uh, What's his name? His name's Eric Morton. I'm telling him now. Eric Mortensen, you ain't getting an ID, motherfucker. You're screwed. All right? Yeah, I will right. get you that ID. Oh, we really? just got to work okay. it out in advance. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, by the way, did you have anything to do with the creative uh, direction of the last Ace album? This is an album. The, not the covers album. The nom- was it Anomaly? The, oh, Anomaly? Which Space was, was the most recent? No, uh, Origin. Space Invader. Space Invader was the most recent originals album. Not the covers album. 
So oh, not the uh, covers record. Do you okay. have anything to do with the direction of that album? Yeah, well, the, yeah, the, I was a big part of that I think album. that's a great album. I, I'm just oh, giving you kudos for the direction. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I wrote the song Give Me a Feeling, um, yeah. uh, which was the first single. I did a track by track of that album. I gave it a good oh, review. Yes. I, I gave kudos. I said, Excellent. Mark, I said John Ostrowski, if you had direct in, input on the direction, uh, you did a good job. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I And he did. He always sells himself uh, yeah. short, but he he was very involved. I remember him playing rough mixes. Remember, we were yeah, in Port Authority. We were playing me rough mixes, and, and I was, like, blown away with the direction of the album. Was going. Yeah, I did a lot for the album. I think I typed out every... I compiled and did all the liner notes of the record. I wrote the song on the record. I you tell Ace the how the direction should go? Do you tell Ace how the direction should go? But here's the thing. When, when it comes to production, though, the, the prime audio production, Ace really... No, I mean song-wise. Song-wise? Song-wise, me, Ace, and the people from the label, um, like, uh, what's that called when you, you like, uh, throw around orders and stuff like that? Yeah, we were trying... I mean, we were, like, throwing, uh, I like this list, or I like this list, and then... Do you ever say to them, though, hey, we got to make... You know, yeah, people exactly. want to hear a song that exactly. sounds like Kiss. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, the song you wrote for, with him, it was it was in a lot of ways the most Kiss esque song on the record. Yeah. Now you know what. Ace, Ace surprised. Not, not. Um, how can I say this in a, in a certain way? Ace really surprised me when I first went into the studio on the, on the first uh, Space Invader session that I was at because I always knew Ace was creative, but I never saw Ace take control like a producer would take control. And he was coming out with like there were the reason I say I was surprised that there were things that Ace did that I wouldn't think he would do. Like he'd talk to the drummer and say, "I want you to play double time here. I want you to play." This I want some percussion so sounds right here. Like he would, he would do things that I didn't think Ace even thought about. Yeah, and that was one of the things. Like as a producer, Ace really took control. He has these, he has visions of stuff that that I uh, like certain things that I only thought drummers or I only thought you know bassists or so and so would think of. But Ace really. Um, he was thinking like a real, you know, experienced producer when he was doing that record. All right. I'm talking about songs. There's like some good songs there. But anyway, all right. I didn't mean to put you on the no, spot, that was a, that was a great question. That was a great question. And, I, and you know, I, I take those meet and greets like personally because I am I want everybody to feel like they got their money's worth. And if they don't feel like well, they got, got his got money's worth. worth. He got his money's worth. He got okay. thrown out. <laughs> I will say in John's defense, like, because that a lot of people come up to John and write even online about how how great he organizes those meet and greets. So, you know, I mean, I, I do think that uh, there's a lot of it was props probably to be just, given I to, think to probably, the way those are organized. I think probably Eric Mortensen is just an asshole and had no <laughs> right to ask for an ID. It's, a, well, it's rude. But we'll, we'll fix we'll fix it. Occasionally, like, there, there was a guy yeah. in Vegas uh, just recently, a nice guy. Um, he, he, he emailed me and said, you know what, John, I thought that meet and greet wasn't good. I said, oh, come really? back, we're going to try it again. And he came back the next time and, and he was like, you know what, John, you made up for it. It was a great meet and greet. So, so sometimes, you know, every once in a while there's some weird thing. And, and I'll tell you the truth. You know, sometimes there's, we had, it's a really funny story once. I, I had a guy that was so mad at us, including being mad at Ace. And uh, it was a, it was a funny story. The, the, we, we usually have something called the drying table. So let's say a guy gets like five things signed. We put him on this little side table. And oh, what so happened the, the was there was Sharpie a Sharpie will get dry. Was it? So the Sharpie can dry? Yeah, so the Sharpie can dry. Because I don't want their stuff to get right, like smeared. So then, uh, and so uh, an, uh, an excited uh, fan uh, accidentally uh, took uh, an uh, item uh, from the previous, from the next guy in their bag. And then their phone went dead and we couldn't get in touch with them. And I assured the guy that we were going to get his rare item back. And then I even had him come over and sit with Ace. And, and Ace said, I promise you, that, that thing of me that I signed for you, we will get it back from the previous person. John knows who it is. And, um, and the guy, he was a very nice guy, but he actually, I think, got a little bit mad at me and at Ace. And, and we ended up getting his, his item back. But what, what I always thought was a little bit funny, and, and this is not Ace's opinion, it's my opinion, 
is that a guy liked Ace so much that he brought an Ace item to get signed, and then Ace, due to no, uh, you know, wasn't part of Ace's control, a, a different fan accidentally, truly by accident, took the item, and then this guy kind of got mad at Ace and let let it be known to Ace that he was mad at him. Wait a minute. Yeah. A guy can get mad at Ace and still be on the bus, but a guy will ask for an ID and get physically well, this, ejected off the bus. Yes. Yeah. Well, this was... <laughs> I still don't know about the physically ejected, but see, that could be a problem by a rogue security guard who, honestly, if, right, he, if anybody got thrown off, it was because of rogue I'm sorry security. I brought it up. And, and this guy who got mad at Ace, that, it wasn't on a bus. It was in a... It was a backstage. Okay, Sometimes you don't yeah, do them all always okay, on the bus. Yeah, okay. So anyway, right. bottom line is uh, John Astronomy tries to make... These meet and greets work well. Occasionally, you're they go a little haywire. You're doing Thank a great Thank you. Job. When's and the next Ace album coming out? The next Ace show is... A, no, album. Oh, album. The next Ace album is being worked on right now. Um, Ace has a handful After of songs. After the Kiss reunion. Okay. He's, doing a, he's doing the Kiss reunion first, right? He's doing what? He's doing the Kiss reunion first, right? Uh, well, uh, no one knows. <laughs> Not, no, truly. Uh, uh, that'd be very interesting. Uh, but uh, it, it, as far as I know, that's... Uh, uh -huh. Who knows if that's ever going to happen. But... Um, Come on, give me a scoop, man. No, I, I swear to God. Scoop at each trunk and and and, and the, uh, no one knows. No. Not even Ace knows, and that's that's a total fact. I don't even think Kiss. So there knows you go. You heard moment. it here first, friends. Ace is going to be back in Kiss. You heard it from John Ostrowski on the Rock. All right. All right yeah, I don't think anyone, including uh, Paul Stanley, Gene Simmons, or Ace, really know if if that's ever going to happen. They gotta wait and see if they get enough. Um, see it would be a office. real cool thing if it did. Um, if it didn't, uh, Ace is still gonna have a great uh, career in Paul and Gene. And, and Tommy and Eric are going to have a great career and I'm a fan of all the different lineups of Kiss for real I really really I was just talking about how much I liked the Crazy Nights era that was a great era that's when I first uh, I went to like four shows on that tour but anyway if, if you got an issue with a meet and greet email me and I'll see what I can do to fix it okay thank you guys all right, Joe. let's hit another, let's hit another song is that cool Michael Another song. Give me yeah. a feeling. I'm sorry that I, I did that to you. <laughs> no, no, that's all right. All right. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. John owes me, I think, at least $50 exactly. for my... <laughs> exactly. Um, no, I, owe, I probably owe you your money back. No, no, no worries. Hey, let's let's do this. Are you doing an Ace song? Yeah. I, and then I'll come back. I'll tell a little story about this. Song. Listen, this is... Uh, this is, is this the song, song that John wrote? John wrote, yes. Okay. And it's called Give Me a Feeling. All right. And it was off the Space Invader record. Here we go. On... on Rock and roll on the rock and roll geek show. There you go.
I like that Ace Freely album. Yeah, no, it was a good record. It's a good record, definitely. definitely. Did you help him write that? Because you had well, a band with, with uh, John. Yeah, John and I have had numerous bands through the years, and and we had a song called I'm the Man, which was like a, a, a kiss. It was an ex- we tried to make it sound exactly like Kiss, uh-huh. and uh, it was from probably like 1995 that we went into the studio and we recorded that. I wrote I wrote the melodies, the vocal melodies, uh, and John wrote all the music. And that song, which was called "I'm the Man," is your melodies the same as that, as what just played? No, no. And and John claims that he never played Ace our version of the song. He just redemoed an instrumental version of the song. But I could play you a little bit of that if you want to hear it. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you can hear it. You can hear. Let me. Let me. Uh, um, and then another the, the, the right. thing that we should note before we get out of here. This, this is our original demo of it. Um, which, if you listen and you compare it, it's the same riff. But you know, so in theory, I, I did write the song with John, but none of the parts that I wrote are included on on the A, the A song. We don't have to listen to the whole thing, but you know, I'm just playing. Sounds good to me. Yeah, anyways, that's the, that's never before heard. That's the original, original Give Me a Feeling from like 1995. Did John uh, give you songwriting credits on, on the Ace album? No, no. But he wrote, again, I only wrote the vocal melodies and, and my brother and I wrote the lyrics, none of which were used. Okay. Uh, on that Ace version, Ace rewrote the vocal parts, even tweaked the guitar parts slightly. Although it's pretty much the same guitar part. So yeah. Anyways, there you go. So you think they're doing this convention again, this expo again next year? You think they're gonna do one? I don't know. I kind of I don't know. After the, after this morning's debacle, I don't know if I'll be invited back or not. But uh, right, right. I had a pretty good time. Did yeah. Fun. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was all right. I'm starting to fade a little bit now. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little bit. I'm ready. Well, you got to get up and jam, right? Is that still happening? I'm hoping it's not going to happen, but right. I don't know. So you wanted to ask me some questions? Yeah, I wanted to, and then we'll wrap it up. But I wanted to go back to your Exodus days because I'm a, I'm a Exodus fan. I've followed their history. Uh-huh. Rob Dukes, they're one of their the recent took, singers. At his place. Yeah, and yeah. Got kicked out. Right. Yeah, he's he's a really close friend of mine. But oh, is he? Does he live in New York? He he used to. He's in. He recently moved to Arizona, but he's uh, he's. Did you New talk York. to him after he got kicked out? Oh yeah, many times. He was bummed out. Wasn't yeah. He? yeah, yeah, yeah. He he was hurt by the way it all went down. I mean, he, he so they just call him and say you're out. Because that's how it happened. Basically, with me. things started getting weird. They weren't like talking to him quite as much, and he was getting married. So uh, he invited the whole band to his wedding. Tom showed up, but no one else. And he said and there was a strange awkwardness when Tom was at the wedding. And uh, then he was on his honeymoon, and he got a call on his honeymoon. You're out of the from who? From I believe Tom, same guy who was at his yeah okay. yeah Tom, Tom got Hunnigan. elected yeah. to to do the duties. Yeah, it, it, he's he was he was out of the band. They were gonna get Zetro back. Tom just said, "Hey, you're out of the band." Yeah, when he was on his honeymoon. Yeah, yeah, and. I mean, it's you know this is Rob's version of events, but that's pretty pretty lousy that they couldn't at least wait until some time had passed and uh, you know between his honeymoon. I was doing a thing because after Exodus got dropped from Capitol, uh, Gary was doing another thing with me and him and Tom and uh, another guitar player and uh, the guy from. Uh, Cromack, what's his name, John Joseph or something? I'm not sure. Anyway, whatever, yeah. was gonna uh, be the singer, but he w- so we were practicing and we would practice once a week, and then I got a call from Gary and goes, "You're out of the band." Really? Wow. That was it. Wow. Wow. And then, like a week later, they reformed Exodus. Right. Wow. With a different guy. Yeah. Wow. So, whatever. Well, you know that Force of Habit record. 
the, the thing I wanted to ask you about is obviously that was a different sound for Exodus, you know, that record. Did you ever go back and yeah. listen to that album again? Yeah. It's not yeah. bad. I think yeah. it's pretty good. Yeah, no, it, it has it has some, some good songs. I like the title track a lot, which we could actually play if you want. But I had nothing to do with the, the writing of that album either. So right. I was just a bass player. But do you think they were attracted to you? Because at that time, obviously, metal wasn't cool. They were going through kind of... No, an identity say, crisis, and you were more like a, this rock and roll guy as opposed to like a crazy metal dude. No. Is that one of the reasons they were attracted to bringing you into the band? I'm pretty sure I know exactly why they were attracted to me. And I, I'm writing a book, which I may never get finished written. But wow, cool. They wanted a guy who looked like Jason Newstead. Really? Really? Wow. And I got to the I got to the audition and um, and Rick Hunold, the other guitar player, and goes, look, he's got the chin like Jason. Really? Wow. And uh, and I kind of got hit the same hairstyle, yeah. And so I think and I played the songs well, so I think that's why I got the gig. Wow, that's interesting. That's my theory. That's, I'm pretty sure I'm right on that. I right. I had a lot of fun in that band. Those they were all great guys. I had a blast. How I long did you play with them? A couple years. Right. We recorded the album in England. Right. And we toured with Sabbath and <clears throat> Sabbath and Motorhead and right. Body Count and had a good time. I loved it. Well, we, well you, you had that that Christmas card, you know, with the Butlers from the Butlers, yeah, and Geezer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it? What was it like touring with with those guys in Sabbath? Did you get to know them much? At I was all? afraid to really talk to them, right. except for Dio. Dio was nice. To he was I, nice. Was, I was intimidated by all those guys because I was starstruck. Did you ever have a beer or hang out with Dio or anything like that? Dio was gonna get up on stage uh, and play. We were we rehearsed "Long Live Rock and Roll." Right. He was going to get up and play that with us, and um, I think the, the Exodus guys, or not the Exodus, the, the Sabbath guys, told him he couldn't do it. Yeah. 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 Well, that was Dehumanizer tour for them. Yeah, it was a good album too. Yeah, yeah. I had a good time. I was starstruck, and I didn't really hang out and talk to all those guys. I was just, I was new to the whole thing, so I didn't want to make waves. Right. Were you surprised when Gary Holt fired you from the band? Yeah, I guess so. He didn't fire me from Exodus. He fired me from a band he was forming after Exodus. Oh, okay. Okay. So, well, what happened? No, because I deserved it. Because I was playing in a couple other bands, and I came to rehearsal, I came to practice once unprepared. Right. And I made a lot of fuck ups. Right. So I kind of brought it on myself. Well, what happened with Exodus? How did you, how, what was Then your... they reformed right after that. Right okay. after that happened, they reformed. So you were. Did you get a call saying, hey, we're reforming Exodus? I didn't get any call after that. After Gary told me, come get your shit. Right. After, okay, gotcha. From the other so side band yeah. that he was forming. Right. So you just kind of figured, oh, Exodus is done And too. then right after that, well, Exodus was done already. Exodus right. was broken up. Right, okay. okay. And Gary was forming a new band. And then he kicked me out. And like two weeks after that, Exodus reformed. Wow. Okay. With the guy who replaced me in the other thing. So, okay. you know. All right. Cool. What are you going to do? Well, can we hit Force a Habit? If you want to. The title track? It's by your show, Mark yeah, Regal. Let's do it. And then we'll maybe come back and start to wrap things up. All right. This is a Talking Metal podcast with the Rock and Roll Geek Show.
right, there you go. That's me, friends. All right, how you doing, Mark? You, I'm, you're I'm good. Out yet? Yeah, no, I'm I'm definitely fried. We are we are at like 7:30 here. We've I've been here since 8:30 this morning. So. Oh, you, you start setting up at 8:30? Yeah, yeah, I should have done that. Yeah. I wouldn't be stuck here in the corner if I would have done that. Right, right. Yeah, there was some. Did, did you get into this already on a previous show? There was a little issue with you getting set up here. Or? Not really. But right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But they 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 eventually took care of you, right? Well, I'm sitting here in the corner with my own table. Yeah, <laughs> they took care of me, all right. <laughs> so, dude, before we before we sign off here, you were obviously one of not only the first music podcast, but you were one of the first podcasters. Period. Back in 2004, like, where did where did you learn about this technology, and why did you decide to start doing the Rock and Roll Geek Show way back in? The podcasting infancy days. Like you, I probably want you wanted to be a DJ probably when you were a kid. Yeah, yeah, that's what I did too. But I was doing a, I was I was in a band, American Heartbreak, and I was right. doing a blog. Right. And something I for some I was trying to figure out blog software or something, and then I googled something or Yahoo or whatever it was back then. Right. And I came across Adam Curry's audio blog. Right. right. So I listened and. And I said, oh, maybe this will be fun to do. I'll do my own radio show online. So that's right. what I did. And then and it became podcasting. And, and Adam Curry uh, heard about my show somehow, and he promoted my show, and then I just got lucky. Right. If right. I wouldn't have started podcasting. And then you went to work for him for a while, though. Yes, yeah. they started pod shows not right. that long after. But if I wouldn't have started doing this, podcast would be just fine. And I, there'd be plenty of music podcasts right. if I wasn't doing it. So no, yeah, just, definitely. But... <clears throat> but you were definitely I got, I was ahead one of the, the curve. first ones that yeah. did it. Yes. Yeah. And do you hear from Adam Curry anymore anymore? Yeah, I talk to him occasionally. Occasionally. Yeah. The guy who he does a show called No Agenda with John Dvorak. Right. Yeah. He John. Seemed- when I worked for Mevio or in Pod Show, John Dvorak was working there too. He was on. I was in charge of video of the of uh, the video production, and he came on. And so John Dvorak was working with me for a while. Yeah. I, I was listening to that for a while, but it started to get a little political for me. It's and all I, political. I, yeah, it's all yeah. politics. Yeah, I, yeah. I started to zone yeah. out. I used to like that show Adam did where he would just play music. Which oh, he, the Daily Source Code. I didn't really like that show. Yeah, I, I, I talk to Adam occasionally. He's a yeah. good guy. Yeah, yeah. And he, is he still like? What is he up to now? He makes. They make like they make like two hundred grand doing that No Agenda show. Right. They just, make tons of money just with donations. donations. All donations. Right. Wow. Yeah, he says he does a value. He calls a value for value model, and they ask heavily for donations, and they get like people to donate like hundreds of dollars an episode. Wow! And is that is he still just running off his MTV fame from back in the day? Or no, I think they got their own. Well, he's got fans, and John Dvorak has fans as well. Right. So they right. make a lot of money. It's a, if you're, I mean, they they do a lot of hard work on that show. So I don't have anything bad to say about those guys. Those right. Guys, but yeah, I talk to Adam occasionally. Cool. Not that often, but. Yeah. Well, dude, thanks for having me on this episode. I really appreciate it. Is that it. is that all your notes? Yeah, I, I want to play one more song. Do we do that to take us out, or, or do we play it and uh, then come back? Whatever you want to do. It's your show. It's this is the talking metal show. I'm just the, I'm just the guest uh, co-host. Right. Well, I guess we can we can sign off and uh, play. I think you turned me on to this band. I'm I'm not exactly sure, but on one of your episodes years ago, the the helicopters. Uh huh. What album are you gonna play? Uh, the, I went to the, the Crimson, God? the Crimson Ballroom, which was off of. Uh, let's see if I can. I'm not an authority on the helicopters. I just yeah. know by cream the Grace of God. Cr- I have Cream room. of yeah. the Crap. Okay, volume yeah, that's one. Cream of the Crap. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So love this song. The jam at the end is just insane. And uh, again, thank you, Michael Butler, well, for having Mark, me. Mark, thanks for coming on. Talking Metal. I'm sure everybody knows Talking Metal. So. Yeah. Uh, oh, I did want to announce one thing. I haven't mentioned this anywhere yet that I'm going to be launching a new website. Uh, we'll see how... A new what, Talking Metal website? No, it's called... It's actually sort of, but not really. It's talkingrock.net. It's okay. going to be a new website. We're launching this fall. Are you going to do a new podcast, Talking Rock podcast? Yeah, I'm doing... I just started a Talking Rock podcast. Oh, talking okay. Metal will continue. Uh, metal Raps, which I do with Mitch LaFon, will continue. Um... But yeah, Talking Rock will be a new website currently in development coming this fall. All right. 
to the internet. Yeah, there you so, go. Yeah, so stay tuned rock. for that. Yeah. All right. All right, Mark, thanks for coming on the Rock and Roll Geek Show. I really appreciate it. You know how to reach me, so I don't need to tell you. Uh, Mark, TalkingMetal.com. TalkingMetal.com on Facebook and Twitter and all, all right, that, too. All yeah, right. cool. All right, this is Crimson Ballroom by the Helicopters off the Cream of the Crap record, Volume 1. All right, thanks for listening, friends. I'll talk to you soon. It's a rock and roll geek train wreck.